We've already read the text for today. What is that? A negative text, isn't it? Well, that's just one negative text. Well, we're going to make something positive out of it because God did, right? I mean, this is a reality. This isn't something that we varnish over and say, well, you know, but you know how we are. Yeah, I know how we are. We're sanctified, right? We're in Christ Jesus. We're walking in the spirit. We're not walking in the flesh. That's how we are. You want to talk about how we are? Let's talk about the real way we are. But the new man, the one that's been sanctified to set apart to do his will. That's the one I want to think about. I did enough thinking about the other one. The centrality of the gospel is our theme for this, this whole renewal. It's right at the core of what God's doing. The what's God doing? He's bringing many sons to glory. When we get there, and we are going to get there. Every eye shall see him. You know, right now the scoffers, they're scoffing, but they won't be scoffing for very long. There's a, see, there's a shelf day. You want to be a scoffer? No, I don't think you want to be a scoffer, but you know what I'm saying. It's a rhetorical question. Well, you know, people may say, well, you can be a scoffer, but you can only be one for a very short time. Because one of these days, every knee is going to bow and every tongue is going to confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God. He's done all things well. We just sang a song. He's done all things. He hasn't done anything wrong. God can't make a bad choice. He can't do it. He's God. And there is none like unto him. See, this, this renewal, I praise God for this renewal. It has more to do with the good news than it has to do with the bad news. Well, that is the gospel, right? It's the good news. What has God done? Now, some people reject it. Well, you know, some people will reject it. There's a, that, that's what the, that, we just read that. Some people are going to not obey. But, you know, they're not even the point. The ones who don't obey, the ones who turn away, they're not the point of salvation, right? Salvation is the saving of men. Eternal salvation. Now, I do want to spend a few minutes considering the effects of the obedience of faith. There are some effects to obeying the gospel, and there are some effects to not obeying the gospel. This is very real. This is right in our face all the time, isn't it? You wake up in the morning, it won't be very long until you'll be faced with some kind of decision where you got to decide, am I going to obey God or am I going to disobey God? Well, now, you know, this is the way it is. Well, see, I highly recommend obeying God. I'm just going to say I'm sanctioning obedience to God. I spent enough time in my life in the other category. I don't want to spend another moment in that category. So I'm gonna, I want God to work in me, to help me to deny ungodliness and worldly lusts and to live soberly and righteously in this present generation. Now that, that is going to require grace. We're living in a time of trouble. But greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. Let me comfort you right now with, this, with these words. What God's put in you is eternal. <laughs> it can't die. You, we can die. We can die. Now, before I begin, I, I am compelled by the Holy Spirit to give you a testimony. I have been compelled. On December 25th, I thought I was as good as dead. My lungs were 98% full of blood. I went to the emergency room and... And you know that you're in trouble when they don't say a whole lot. They just kind of like rush around you and don't say, what's going on there? But as soon as the cancer word came up, the devil went to work. He's working. Say, well, why don't you make a deal with God? You make a deal with him. Tell him, well, if you just take whatever it is away, I'll do this or I'll do that. Well, I have to tell you right now, uh, what saved me at that time 
was this verse. And um, it's in Colossians chapter 3. And it, it just like kept repeating over in my head. For you are dead. And your life is hid with Christ in God. Now, if I'm already dead, then what am I worrying about dying for? Well, I had to reason this out with myself. Well, they're all worried about me dying. I wouldn't tell them, you don't understand, I'm already dead. Of course, they'd probably put me in the other part of the hospital. <laughs> See, the question is not, am I going to die? It's, am I going to die well? Am I going to die in such a way that God will be glorified in my death? So I asked the Lord, yeah, you know, you got these thoughts. You know, you could even maybe justify it. Like, well, Hezekiah asked for more time and God gave it to him. Oh, let's not forget about Manasseh, though. Oof. I don't want to think about that. If the Lord, if it's your time, then it's your time. Let's enter into it with joy and thanksgiving. God does everything right. He can't pick a bad time. So as I mean, whatever your whatever your is in your lap, do it heartily as unto the Lord and not as unto men. Give yourself to God. Well, that's just going through my mind too. So you got the Holy Spirit; He's encouraging and comforting, and you got Satan; He's trying to, you know, just get a little doubt in there. Just a little doubt will go a long way. So I asked the Lord. I said, well, you know, Lord. I don't know. I don't know what, I don't know if this is the end or not. You do. So I, I, just let me die well. Help me to die well. If this is what I'm going to do. And so what what he do three days later? Now remember, I can't get no oxygen. I went in 80% oxygen. Three days later, they sent me home. So, so I, 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 on the way home, I'm sitting there, I'm thinking, you know what? God answered my prayer. He's given me more time so I can die well. Time to do something for him. So God was showing me that the gospel of Christ is indeed good news. <laughs> he said, no, I didn't send your soul to hell. He could have. There was a lot of time in my life when he could have done that, but he didn't. Why? Known unto God are all his works from before the foundation of the world. Somebody came and preached the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ to me. They exposed me to God. And, um, you know, the devil, he he's, he's, goes about like a roaring lion, right? Yeah, he's a liar. He never tells you the way things really are, right? He tells you that whatever it's going to take. What he tell Eve? Whatever it took to get her to... To disobey God. That's, that's all. Just whatever it took. And he's right there. And, you know, I think sometimes he knows you better than you know yourself. He, he knows the areas that you haven't yet fully sanctified unto the Lord. Is there an area like that? Believe me, you're not going to miss it. He's not going to miss it. So he's going to send something. Say, well, maybe I can get in over here. Well, Jesus lived a perfect life. Jesus died a perfect death. Jesus rose from the dead, perfected forever, so I don't have to go to hell. This is the gospel. Somebody else did everything that was necessary for me to be saved, and it wasn't by works of righteousness that I did. It was by his works. It was by what he did. You're dead. And your life is hid with Christ and God. Now when Christ shall appear, well, our, who is our life, you shall appear with him in glory. And none of that is of your own doing. See, before, why did you believe the gospel? Why, why did you believe? And somebody else decided not to believe. Well, it's called this thing about faith. Now, the Holy Spirit, you know, he, a long time before you believed, he's working in you. He's drawing you. Remember, Jesus said, no man can come unto me except the, my Father draw him. Remember when you were drawn? Oh, I got, I got great memories. 
of being drawn. It, it was a time when it hit me. I don't have to die and go to hell. I don't have to. Why? Because Jesus died. Somebody had to die. Sin offended God. But praise God, Jesus took it away. He appeased the Father. With the death of Christ, God looked at it and he signed off. He said, I'm satisfied. That, that's a death I can be satisfied with. Now, if you believe, if you believe on that, I'll bring you to glory. I'll, I'll do it. So, so who, who, who believes the gospel? Well, those who believe the gospel. Do you believe the gospel? Yeah. See, it's not by works of righteousness. We did, it's not like we just thought it up in the basement one day and we said, well, I'm going to believe the gospel. I'm going to do that. Well, then if you did, it was him that brought you to that conclusion. Amen. Well, that's a good thing, isn't it? Because if it didn't originate in you, you can't mess it up, right? I thank the Lord throughout this whole thing. You know, I, I came to the assembly and they laid hands on me and they prayed for me. And, and I'm telling you, you know, I may not, my lungs may not be at 100%, but they are not what they were. I mean, nobody has to tell me that. I lived it. I, God can do whatever needs to be done if you've got something to do. He can do it. And I wouldn't trade... I wouldn't trade what God's brought me through for anything. Anything. You come through something with the Lord and you've got something. you got some gold now. You can stand in the day of adversity. Why? Because God's with you. God's with you. Who can be against you? Who? Now, now see, but this is going to have to be yours. It's going to have to be something that you walk through. I can look at you and I can perceive somewhat, but when you're in the fire with God, boy, I'm telling you. It's a whole lot different than watching somebody else in the fire. The gospel of Christ is the only message, the only message that has power to save you. So he said, my words, they're spirit in their life. So are you attracted to the words of Christ? Because if you are, that's not an accident. God's drawing you. He's drawing you. You know, it's this drawing. You know when it'll end? When you lay down this life. When you lay down this body and you, 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 you're with the Lord. Amen. You, you can't get any closer than that, right? I mean, you'll be with the Lord. Now, you know, it's in the spirit. It's our first fruit. It's very real. It's going to be the same kind of fellowship, but it's going to be on a different order. When you wake up with his likeness, Oh, I, I draw back from the, the carnal expression, but I just want to go, Woo! <laughs> you wake up and you're like Jesus. See, right now you look in the mirror and you got to say, one day I'm going to put you off. You've done me so much harm. I'm, one day you're going to die. See, I hate my old man. I hate him. You know, every word that Christ said, the spirit in our life, it's like they're dripping with the fatness of God's salvation. If you'll give yourself to the words of Jesus, they will save you. They have power, power. Amen. Now, the good news is that you're accepted in Jesus. That, that's the good news. The question is, 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 am I living in Jesus? A am I, is Jesus the reason why I'm living? Well, if it's not, one, you could say it should be. Another, more powerful way is it can be. He, I, I mean, I know I should, but when I see, when I understand that I can, I can I can live 100% for Jesus if I'll just put my hand to the plow, if I just resist the devil. Well, Jesus will make him flee, right? He, I don't know about you, I, I like to think about this. Jesus doesn't have as much power as he pretends to have. You resist him, do you think he wants to leave? You think it's like he's like, well, okay, you know, I see as Bob's resisting me, I'm going to leave. No, 
Bob resists him, and he sees Christ. He's going, I got to leave. He, he, Satan has never disobeyed. I mean, it, look, look, I'm talking about when Jesus was in the world. Satan had come up, tried to attack him, and try. Jesus told a demon to go. What did he do? Did he say, no, I'm, I'm not going? No, he went. Why? Because Jesus is the king of kings. Jesus is. He has all power in heaven and earth. So, you know, the, when, when Satan did rebel, well, he didn't stick around long, did he? There was war in heaven. I was considering why, why, because uh, the saints now, this may seem odd, why would someone want to resist God? When you get to know God and you see how, how gracious he is and how good he is, um, somebody on the outside that, that you, you're, maybe you're witnessing to him and you're, you're talking to him, it's like perplex you, why don't you want to be saved? Because they don't know God. They think he's a hard taskmaster. I'd have to give up. I'd have to give up. You mean you'd have to give up everything you're going to give up? Because you're going to give it all up. But they don't know God. And sometimes I think the only way they're going to see God is in you. They're going to have to see. You're like a living testimony, a witness. This is what God will do. And I ask God, let me be a good witness. Let me be... I never want to distract from the gospel. Come, somebody look at me and say, well, if that's a Christian, I don't want to be one. God forbid that would ever happen. Now, you know, I'm going to close now. We don't know it, but I'll tell you. I'm going to close now. But I, I, had, I was thinking about this. I had trouble with my lungs, right? Here I am laying in a bed, and I can't, can't get enough oxygen. And yet the whole room is filled with oxygen. They had me on a machine that was trying to pump it into my body. And the nurse had to come in every few minutes and say, breathe, breathe. I'm like, what do you mean breathe? My body just couldn't get the oxygen, but even though it was right there. That's kind of like salvation. Salvation is available. It's right there. It's right in front of our faces all the time. And the question is, is who are you gonna serve? Who are you going to put your hand to? Is it going to be, you know, our generation, it's not so much that people are worshiping false gods. They're worshiping themselves. That's what they're worshiping. They're God now. They do whatever they want to. Well, I can do whatever I want. Can you? Can you really? I'll tell you right now, I can't do whatever I want. I can't. But I found a place where I can, and that's in Christ Jesus. He can see, he says, do what seems good to you. Walk in the Spirit. There's no limitations when you get up in the Christ, up in the Spirit. You can soar with Christ. Amen. Brethren, I'm just going to give you an exhortation. Breathe Christ in. Amen. Breathe Him in. Just like you breathe the air. And it's your life. It's keeping you alive. Just like Christ is keeping you alive. You'd die right now if Christ left you. But he said, I'll never leave you. I'll never leave you. I won't forsake you. Now, he was left and forsaken. But he did it for us. So he can say to us, I'll never leave you. Never. Well, put your trust in him. I guarantee you, you won't be disappointed.